So uh, good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Um, albeit virtually, we would love to be doing this in person. Um, this is the industry engagement webinar for the International Appalachian Trail. Um, this is part of a series of webinars that um, my team have been delivering across um, Donegal and in Northern Ireland for all of the council areas that um, have a section of the International Appalachian Trail passing through them. So by way of introduction, um, my name is Jean Woodrow and I am one of the marketing officers for Outdoor Recreation Northern Ireland. Um, so as I mentioned, I, along with a number of colleagues, um, are carrying out the marketing campaign um, for the trail, as well as delivering on a brand new website. So that's one of the things we're really keen to talk to you about today is how you can get listed on the website um, and also just how you can really tap in to a new bunch of walkers that are going to be um, passing through um, Donegal and Northern Ireland. So by way of introduction to the International Appalachian Trail, um, the, tr the trail is part of a much larger set of mountains that were formed more than 250 million years ago. Um, they were together um, and then when the Earth's plates collided, um, it formed a supercontinent called Pan Pangaea um, and they straddled the central part of that continent. Um, in what is today's Eastern North America, Eastern Greenland, Western Europe, and Northwest Africa. So when this supercontinent split up, the mountains separated to form the Atlantic Ocean that we know today. And remnants of these mountains have ended up in different places of which we have a large section of 279 miles. So the International Appalachian Trail began as the idea of a man called Dick Anderson, who um, that took place in uh, 1993, had this thought. Um, he was the commissioner of the Maine Department of Conservation, and he traveled frequently in the neighbor, neighboring Canadian provinces of New Brunswick and Quebec and so on. But he realized that the mountain range just didn't end at the US Canadian border. So he really wanted to make a long distance trail that people could continue along this mountain range. The mission of the trail is sinking beyond borders. And so we see that partnership in the United States, but we also see this echoed in other countries around the world. The International Appalachian Trail is actually part of 23 chapters. So there's 23 other places in the world where someone can go and explore a section of this um, mountain range. So it's really exciting. Um, and this project came about um, councils and lag groups were successful in a north, south, rural, let me get it right, rural um, development program. And it means that there's been a lot of work has gone on behind the scenes. I can see Richard here and he's certainly been kept busy um, with all the work going on. Um, so as part of that, there's been a lot of capital works going on. So diversions of the trail off road, um, new car parks, um, new trails around forests, new styles, so on. Um, there's new way markers just gone in, new um, trailhead signage. Um, it's been very busy out there. Um, many people haven't necessarily heard maybe of the International Appalachian Trail. It was actually launched, launched in August of 2013. But with limited marketing behind it, it kind of never really took flight. Um, so we're excited that we kind of get to start and really push it out to people. The International Appalachian Trail through Northern Ireland actually picks up the Ulster Way, which hopefully many of you are familiar with. Um, so a lot of walkers will be familiar with the Ulster Way. So we're going to now talk more about the International Appalachian Trail. Um, the trail, as I said, is 279 miles and it begins at the Slave Lake Cliffs in Donegal before travelling across Donegal into Northern Ireland, up 
through the Causeway Coast and Glens and then finishing um, in Larn. So it's a long trail and there's lots of diverse landscapes for people to go through, whether they're looking for more mountainous regions like the Sperrins um, and tougher climbs like even Slave Lake or they're looking that beautiful coastal walk um, that the Causeway Coast and Glens really does offer. So as part of this uh, webinar tonight, and as part of the webinars that we've been doing, we're really encouraging providers along the trail to start thinking of how they can introduce their business to these walkers. So perhaps you're a local walking tour guide and you can start doing tours that have an IAT specific theme to them, or maybe your accommodation provider and you can provide a shuttle service along the route. So by way of some sort of agenda tonight, um, Richard is here. Richard Gillen is from Causeway Coast and Glens um, Council. And Richard's going to talk to you about what work the council have been doing, um, some of which is still ongoing. Um, so he'll really give you a flavour of that. Um, then my colleague Beverly has done a pre-record for us. Um, and that, in that uh, presentation, we'll be looking at the audit that we did of service provision along the route. And Bev will be looking at a general view of what applies to all of the council areas. And then I'll take you through the Causeway Coast and Glen specific elements. So perhaps those gaps that we've identified. And finally, we're really excited to um, have a lovely pre-record by Eve Nicholson. Eve is from the Wales Coastal Path team. Um, the Wales Coastal Path is a very exciting trail. I actually had the privilege of walking a section of it um, at the beginning of September. And it really is a lovely flagship of how we can see providers have tapped into the walking market and provide different packages. Um, at the end of Eve's presentation, she includes an email address. Um, and as with everybody here, we do invite you to get in touch with us um, with any questions you have, or perhaps you're looking for a little help with an idea that you have. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Richard. Richard, is your microphone working? I think it is, yeah, Jane. Hopefully yes. everybody can hear me. So, Perfect. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Richard Gillen. I'm the Coast and Countryside Manager at Causeway Coast and Glens uh, Borough Council. Um, and I lead up the team that deals very much, well, with a range of issues, including beach management, biodiversity, uh, coast and countryside management, and really most importantly, in the case here, outdoor recreation. So we're responsible for the management of trails, a number of trails, and also the promotion and development of new trails. So... Uh, the International Appalachian Trail project has been really welcome because it gives us, it gives council an opportunity to upgrade um, where appropriate and where necessary. Uh, uh, probably one of the most important parts of our, our walking product. Um, so the actual route, as James already said, as it passes through, as it passes through our area, or through most of Northern Ireland, through the majority of Northern Ireland, it follows the route of the Ulster Way. Um, for us, that's a, a some distance um, of about 114 miles, or just under 184 kilometres. Um, so we've, we have the lion's share uh, for any one local authority and, and obviously it goes through a range of different private and public land, um, some of our more well-known areas and whilst we are Causeway Coast and Glens Borough Council, we also have an incredible uh, upland area as well. So uh, the route itself comes in in the, in the southwest corner, uh, just above Glen Sheehan. Um, and, and part of Sperrin's AOMB and the route, the route, fortunately for us, the route also also links all four areas of outstanding natural beauty that occur within our within our borough. So it comes in in the southwest, just up, just just above Dungiven and Sperrin's AOMB, heads towards Dungiven uh, before heading up on the uplands about from Benbrada northwards up Donalds Hill and uh, up towards Benevena, um, then across from Benevena to to meet up with the Causeway Coast. Um, uh, and then from the Causeway Coast, then down through the Antrim Coldman Glen before it goes out into to Mid and East Antrim Borough Council again. So um, it's an extensive, an ex extensive route in our area, and it very much forms a spine for other route development. We would hope. Um, I don't anticipate many people are going to do the whole three hike. Um, certainly not in the one go. Um, maybe taking it off as they go over weekends or weeks or days or as they as they as they as they see fit. Um, but 
it does present a real opportunity for the development of walking product and giving people the opportunity to get outdoors and what is the basic entry level of outdoor recreation activity which is walking you know which most people can do it's relatively straightforward to get into um but our route and certainly the route that goes through our patch offers offers quite a bit uh, a, a variety of terrain from beach to coastal walking to upland to forest woodland uh, etc so we're we're really pleased to be involved in this opportunity and, and for that I'd also like to publicly and put this on record notes being recorded really thank the funders for all the money, all, all the input and resource they're putting in to allow this to be possible for the rural development program so um, hopefully that'll that'll keep us keep us in favor with the funders for future opportunities so ultimately the route as I say is over it's 114 miles as it comes through the Causeway Coast and Glens and that's essentially can be split into three sections the existing waymark ways so there's the North Sperrins way which runs from them given to Castle Rock um, there is the Causeway Coastway, which runs from Port Stewart to Bally Castle, and then there is the Moy Way, which runs from uh, Bally Castle uh, southeast to uh, Waterford before it goes out into uh, we join Men Me Stantrum. So, whilst those have been the sort of focus, those sort of are both sort of two day walks, they're about 33 miles each route. Obviously, the, the International Appalachian Trail provides a, a bigger opportunity for us. Causeway Coast and Glensborough Council came about from Balamoney, Limavady, Corian, and Moy District Councils. So this is our first real attempt and an and opportunity to to market one whole trail brand new uh, as one organization uh, and, and that that that's one of the things that's allowed us to do in this has been to um look at which sections need to be changed because you know the ulster way in that route has existed since the early 70s when wilfred capper um had, had developed it um uh, and his time with the sports council um so we're looking at what sections are still appropriate do we need to get new sections in there? And we wanted to get as much off-road as possible. Um, we still have a lot of work to do in some of those sections, um, particularly before anybody says, the section between Ballantoy and Bally Castle is appalling. We know we are working hard, and that's for another day and another funding pot, hopefully, to do something around that. But we want to, and we want to focus on that quality of visitor experience. And that visitor experience could be somebody coming from them given, or they could be from Dublin, or they could come further afield. So, um, uh, we're keen to use the route as a spine for other routes coming off that too, because obviously the route and probably for the interest and in, in some of the accommodation providers who may well be on, on on the call tonight or on the meeting tonight is that the the accommodation may be based in in, in, in some of our settlements, uh, our towns and villages, and the route may may not be coming right through those towns and settlements, but maybe in proximity. So it's it's the highlight that how we get people from the route and it's as much signing people from the route to these towns and settlements as well so that they can avail of the services, avail of the crack, um, avail of, of, of part of that experience that as much, you know, being out there and, and the outdoors, but it's the downtime and having a bite to eat and a bit of refreshment and a bit of fun too. So um, the yeah, big focus on the quality of visitor experience and that goes from everything from the interpretation uh, through to uh, the, the way marking um, and actually the, the quality of the trail furniture as well, which as much as anything reinforces people's um, ability to be there. So they know they're on the right trail. They know they're permitted to be there. It also presents a really fantastic marketing opportunity for us as well about selling other aspects of what there is in our area. You know, so uh, I don't want to dwell on the Causeway Coast way, but it's probably the bit that gets used. The, uh, it's the most popular uh, in terms of visitor numbers. You know, but that's not just a walking trail. It's it's a it's a shop window for everything else there is to offer. Whether you know you're walking along a cliff path and you see somebody out on a paddleboard, you see somebody surfing, you know, you see another something that's of interest, a boat tour or whatever it is, or if you're walking around a banana area, you might see somebody up on a glider. So it, it presents that opportunity to sort of say there's a lot of other activities here too. And you might be on the walking trail, but that doesn't mean you have to break any word records at it. You know, you can take your time or you can always come back another day and do a wee bit more. Um, you don't just have to have to be passing through. So um, in addition to, so we, we replaced uh, a lot of styles uh, and way markers, and there will be certain trailheads where people can jump on and off the route and providing information. We also have a lot of, uh, they're quite distinctive, the round circular uh, stone markers at key points uh, along the trail as well, which are which are a nice wee feature. And we've tried to we try to introduce those in places where where people are going to be stopping. So, for instance, for us, there's certainly one. In, there's one Ballantoy, There's one in uh, Port Stewart, and there's one. Where's the other one? One in Castle Rock, and I think there's a fourth which completely escapes me at the minute. So, my apologies for that. But 
um, you know, we try to build this uniformity uh, with the trail furniture uh, and the interpretive panels uh, so that there's plenty of information out there which will guide people uh, along the way. And we're still our contractor, Campbell Civils, who's, who's doing most of our who's doing our installation work. There's still a bit of work that they have to do, but as the weeks and months go on, you're going to see an awful lot more stuff coming online. Um, and you'll see the very distinctive IAT markers, that rectangular, which comes from the actual Appalachian Trail in, in, in America, which is the white flash. But we've got IAT SAA on it, so they're very, very distinctive. Um, very different from the round way marker, which we're used to seeing. Um, um, what else have we got? We're also mindful of other bits and pieces that are going on as well, not just funded through this particular project, but funded through other aspects of rural development money or other for, for heritage lottery money. So some of you may have, if you've had the chance to go and visit the, the new the new Macrocross viewpoint uh, and also the one at Port Navy, just outside Ballantoy, you know, people say, oh, they're picnic areas or they're car parks. No, they're not. They're trailheads. They're places where people, their experiences in themselves, um, but they're also places where people can hop off or hop on the trail. And maybe they want to just park up at Market Cross and walk a section through to Don Cedric, for instance, or it's the same at, same at Ballantoy. So we're very mindful about what that adds to visitor experience. Um, and you know, this is a year round product we've got now. The past 18 months have showed us that there's a real appetite for outdoor recreation and people want to get outdoors. And perhaps some people have fallen in love with their own country again. And I think that's absolutely brilliant because it makes my job an awful lot easier. Um, one of the other things that we're doing is that we're trying to put as much, well, putting visitor monitor equipment in at key sections. So we have a really good idea as to how many people are actually using the route. Anecdotally, we know there's a lot of people use the Causeway Coastway. Um, probably less so on the North Spreads Way, but that's increasing on that particular section. And it would be the same for the Moy Way. But we're also mindful of other work going on that's come before and, and, and stuff to come after as well. So for instance, the Benevolent Landscape Partnership, Benevolent Coastal Landscape Partnership Scheme, is ongoing at the moment, uh, which is funded by Harry's Lottery Fund. And they're mindful that we have the IAT project going. So they're also doing other works which don't duplicate, but but complement and, and provide an added value to that. So we will be looking at other walking trails coming off the Ulster Way and IAT or North Springs Way in order to provide additional provision and, uh, in terms of that product and allowing people to experience experience out, our outdoors in, in whatever way they see fit. So, uh, Folks, in a nutshell, that's really what we're what, that's what we're up to at the moment. As I say, the role that it continues, and we're going to see you're going to see a bit more. Uh, if you haven't seen some of the trail furniture that's done already in certain sections, there's still a bit more to come. Um, a few delays with a few bits and pieces. Uh, the price of timber has gone up ridiculously, which is affecting everybody in the rollout of this project and and, and others. So um, that that's been made things a wee bit tricky. The other thing about this too is that it's some of these places. They're not easy to get into uh, because of the remote nature. So that's that's taken a wee bit of time. Plus, we also want to be mindful that we don't want overkill on some of these sites as well, because some of these places are absolutely beautiful for in their own right. They don't need a whole pile of signage, you know, to 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 to, to blight the landscape uh, as well. So we're trying to strike a balance with that. We're trying to strike a balance with that. Um, I'm not hanging around on the call tonight because I have, I have some other commitments, but I've, I've, I've spoken to Kerry earlier, uh, Kerry Kirkpatrick earlier today, just to highlight that, you know, I'm more than happy to talk to anybody about the project moving on. Uh, and if anybody has any specific questions, we'll certainly, we'll certainly deal with those. And, and, and there will be other elements that we engage with, with accommodation providers, with other activity providers, with people who have an interest in, in this particular, in this particular trail. Um, and are, you know, we're, we're happy to discuss that with you. So, okay. Perfect. Thank you so much, Richard. Um, great to see things are so busy on the trail and um, so many fantastic projects going on. Um, just to keep the ball rolling with time, um, I'm just going to um, carry my colleague is behind the scenes here helping me with technology. Um, and I'm just going to introduce the recording by Beverly. Um, she's the marketing manager at Outdoor Recreation Northern Ireland. And she's going to talk about servicing at the IAT Ulster Ireland visitors. And she's going to look at a general perspective, as I mentioned earlier. So she'll be looking at what kind of applies to all council areas and then I'll go into the specifics. Thanks, Kerry.
Good evening, everybody. My name is Beverly McGowan. I'm Outdoor Recreation and I's Marketing Manager, and I'm also leading the marketing project for the International Appalachian Trail Ulster Ireland. And this evening, my presentation is going to go over how local businesses can benefit from and service visitors to the trail. So just to give you an overview of the route itself, it's 280 miles in length, which equates to around 450 kilometers. And there in the black on the left hand side, you'll see that it starts at West Donegal at Sleeve League. It passes through the Blue Stack Mountains before then it picks up the Ulster Way in Northern Ireland. It goes through the Sparrow Mountains, then up towards the Causeway Coast before making its way down through the glens of Antrim and then finishing in, in Lorne. So who is actually going to visit the trail? So based on previous research that we've done with other long distance trails, so the likes of the Southwest Coast Path and the Wales Coast Path, which you'll hear more about later on, we anticipate the majority of visitors will be short distance walkers. So 70 to 80 percent will be short distance walkers. So those that have maybe seen the trail on Facebook or the local newspaper and they want to experience it, but they certainly don't want to experience um, a, a long section of it. They just want to maybe walk, to, you know, two to five miles. And we will hear from uh, Eve Nicholson from the Wales Coast Path that the actual average stretch walked along it is actually just three miles long. Um, and another group falling into this category would be previous long distance um, and through walkers that have walked to the IAT but they want to come back now and walk a short distance because they're maybe getting a wee bit older. Then a third of, of visitors we expect to be actual walkers, so medium to long distance walkers. So they'll be walkers that will walk maybe 10 to 15 miles per day over multiple days, over weekends, over weeks, or they will complete, complete the route in its entirety. And those walkers will require walking specific services, which I'll go on to talk about. So this just breaks down the visitor even, even further, just gives you a wee bit more detail on, on, on their motivations and who they are. So first of all, the short distance walker, you know, the IIT is only one part of their trip. They will be doing other things while they're here and they really only want to experience a short section of it. They don't, they don't want to be on it all day long. They're still keen to hear about it and learn about the history of the trail. So they, they're keen to go on, on, on a guided walk. Then we have the actual walker, which is broken down into three groups. So we've got the medium distance, the long distance and the through walker. So the medium distance walker, they'll enjoy walking as, as part of or it might be the main reason for their trip and they'll complete one or more days walking and they may book some some walking services. Then we have the long distance walker who's an enthusiastic walker and definitely they, ha they will come and visit because it's the main reason um, for their trip and they'll participate in, in one week of walking or completing large sections of, of longer distance trails. And they're very interested in bagging trails. So if you like putting them on their on their bucket list. Then we have the through walker. The through walker will walk the IAT in, in one go. It's in, in, in its entirety. They're, they're an avid walker and you know, you could say that they're someone sick in solitude and they've completed other significant long distance trails um, before. And they are very self-sufficient, so they'll carry all their own food and pitch their own tent. So the requirement for walking services is less with, with the through walker. And through this marketing project, we'll be carrying out two marketing campaigns, um, one in Ireland and one in America because of those links with the Appalachian Trail. You know, there's lots of people in America who've done the Appalachian Trail that would be interested in completing um, this, this trail. So what services do they require? We'll start off with the short distance walker because that's going to be the majority um, of visitors. So again, you know, that as I mentioned before, they're, they're keen to hear and learn about the trail so that they are interested in going on a guided walk, a short guided walk, and they're keen to have, you know, refreshments and toilet stop maybe before or after their guided walk and tea and coffee and scones. And then because one of the marketing campaigns we will be carrying out is in America, some Americans will have higher crowds and some won't. So there may be a requirement for a shuttle service to and from their hotel to the, the start point of, of the different walks. 
The medium to long distance walker will require accommodation, food and drink, shuttle services to and from their hotel. They might require luggage transfers from the, to, to their next accommodation. And some more so than the medium distance walker may require walk guides uh, and learn about the, the trail as, as they go from the walk guide. So how can local businesses service these walkers? Uh, you know, I know I understand that some businesses will be reluctant to offer services at the start until the trail is well established and attracting a significant amount of visitors. But again, you know, it is like that chicken and egg scenario that until there's there's walker services available um, and packages available, that's what's going to attract more walkers to the trail. So. Based on, on who we anticipate that's going to visit the trail, um, we would recommend that you know local businesses focus on you know providing for that short distance walker because at the end of the day that's going to be 70 to 80 percent of visitors. You know whether it's offering you know guided walks and um, providing storytelling, um, partnering up with a local cafe to offer you know tea, coffee, and scones before or after the walk. Um, and if you can provide shuttle services for those that may need to and from their accommodation. And even though the number of medium to long distance walkers initially will be lower until the trail is well established, it is still worth providing for that visitor, you know, because that's still going to be a third of the visitors. So whether that's um, offering packages that include accommodation or pack lunches that walkers can take out with them during the day and when they're walking and evening meals when they get back um, whether there's walk guides for the longer distance sections of the trail um, and offering shuttle services and, and luggage trans transfers as well and you know don't forget if you can't provide all of the visitor services in, in one package then there's lots of people and lots of businesses um, on this call that you can partner up with um, and work collaboratively to you know, provide for that visitor. So whether that's just a walk guide partnering up with a local cafe to offer you know, tea, coffee and, uh, and scones after their guided walk, um, it's all about working in, in partnership. So to help you stand out and be really proactive and attracting walkers to your business, there's some things that you can do just to tailor your current offering. So whether that's offering storage, washing and drying facilities for walkers equipment, providing information on, on local IIT walks, so giving them access to the, the new IIT website, which will be IITulsterireland.com, and that will contain information on, on the route and um, all the, the walking services. You can stock the new trail guide that we're producing, provide information on local walk guides, offer shuttle services and, and luggage transfers if they're required, um, offering a hot drink after a long day's walking, which I know would be really welcomed, providing access to kitchen facilities early in the morning to, you know, for walkers to prepare food or offer early breakfasts before they, before they head out, providing walkers discounts, um, something that's really useful and I really recommend all the businesses to do along the route is to recce the route and just really get to know it and put yourself in, in walker's shoes just to understand what they, they might require. And then lastly is thinking maybe about becoming pet friendly just because more and more walkers are going out walking with, with their dogs. And here's just some examples just to give you a wee bit of inspiration um, of how these businesses are, are standing out and attracting, attracting walkers. So, you know, discounts for walkers or there's drying facilities. Um, the two pictures on the right hand side are pictures from accommodation providers in America along the Appalachian Trail. So you've got some quirky walking boots just along, along the fence and then you've got an Appalachian Trail sign within the accommodation. Uh, on the left hand bottom left, we've just got a sign. Um, outside a local pub um, for attracting, you know, welcoming walkers and welcoming their, their pets. And then in the middle there is a coffee cart that it's actually set up along the lagging towpath and they've got picnic tables all around it. So for walkers that are walking the lagging towpath, um, they can stop and have coffee and pastries and sit down and enjoy them. So from October time, Outdoor Recreation and I will be running three marketing campaigns that you can get involved in. 
So we'll be running one in Northern Ireland and Donegal and we'll be using the we'll be doing launch events and we'll be using those to kickstart those campaigns. We'll be running the campaign in Ireland and then we'll be running the campaign in North America just because of the links with the Appalachian Trail. So in North America we'll be targeting those people that have walked the, the Appalachian Trail to come and come and do the International Appalachian Trail here. And then we will also for the short distance walker we will be using the likes of tour operators that have itineraries already in Northern Ireland and Donegal. And we'll also be using Tourism Ireland to promote direct to the, the American consumer. Because we have such a limited budget in, in North America for that short distance walker, we want to focus on IIT walks that are close to areas that are famous and well known by the American visitor and some places that they're, they're, they're already maybe going to visit anyway. So the likes of Loch Esk, Giants Causeway, the Ulster American Folk Park. So there's there's two ways that, that you can get your business promoted. First of all, you can get a listing on the website itself. And then what you can also do is submit an IAT experience for the website and we will use those experiences to promote in, in marketing campaigns. Now there's nothing that you need to do really at the minute. Um, our recreation staff will be in touch with you to help you and support you in creating and developing IAT experiences or just simply tailoring your, your own offering. Um, and we will also send you, we can send um, content on the International Appalachian Trail of Star Island. We can send photos, we can send videos, we can send press releases so that you can promote the trail on your website and social media platforms too. Thanks, Beverly. Um, I'm just going to take you through the specific um, visitor services that we have identified along the Causeway Coast and Glens section of the International Appalachian Trail. Um, and I'll be looking at those areas that we have analysed to see if there's maybe a gap or if there's any specific things we can add into that. Kerry, next slide, please. So this first map that I'm going to show you um, shows you the western side of the Causeway Coast and Glens section of the trail. So this section covers um, Dungiven to Castle Rock. So you can see in the different boxes we've identified different accommodation providers um, of different types. So everything from bed and breakfast and self-catering to glamping pods and maybe campsites or caravan sites. The blue boxes, they show the food and drink offerings that, that we've identified along the route, as well as the red showing any walking providers. So we have taken this from where the person's uh, located um, and so on. So you can see in this section, there's a lot um, of, of providers more so in Dungiven, Limavadi, and then round the Castle Rock, Benone area. So there is a relatively large section there that runs over Benevna and um, so on that, that, that is missing um, accommodation or service provision and so on. Um, but we'll explore that a little later on. Next slide, please, Kay. So this shows the northern section of the trail. Um, I call this the holiday maker section of trail. It's the, the, the place that has probably um, the most amount of accommodation providers, food and drink offerings. Um, and you can also see there are some walking tour guides are based out of this location. So you can see again, there's various options available for people. Um, and quite a lot of these, we haven't got into the specifics such as Port Rush because there's so many cafes and restaurants that really what we're saying to people is if you go to this town, you'll most certainly find somewhere to have lunch, to have dinner, to have breakfast, to have a pint in a local pub. Um, there's plenty there. You can see there in areas like Ballantoy, we've been able to list some of these. Um, and it just helped us kind of work out what was there and, and see any gaps and so on. Next slide, please, Kerry. 
So that last section showed uh, Castle Rock to Bally Castle. And this is a section from Bally Castle all the way down to Glenara. You can see that this section on the eastern side has very little, apart from in the likes of Cushendon and Cushendall. Now, there may be something there that we're not aware of, and this is where we're really keen to find out from you if we have missed something. Um, but you can see there that someone can get walking tours, they can get accommodation, and then they can get um, food and drink as well. Next slide, please, Gary. So when we look at the visitor services, we're able to do a bit of analysis as to, is it sufficient? And when we look at the Western section, um, so that's the Dungiven to Castle Rock section, we can see that actually in Dungiven and Castle Rock that are right on the trail, um, the service provision is sufficient. However, our comment is that while at each end of this section there is um, accommodation and there is food and drink, there's nothing in the middle. So if a walker decides that it's too far to get to Castle Rock, um, they do require some sort of transportation. Um, so that could be a shuttle service, it could be use of a public bus service, um, it could also be use of a local taxi service. And we, we identified that person is halfway between the two, either needs to return to Dungiven to the accommodation they stayed in, advance to Castle Rock, and then return if there are three walkers that want to return back to where they finished, or else they'll need to be shuttled out to somewhere like Lemma Valley, where again there is service provision. The northern section of the trail, there's plenty along the rift. And again, that's where we just encourage that maybe there is a walker who requires something a wee bit different, like a shuttle service um, and so on. And then the eastern section, so that's the section Valley Castle to Glenariff. So the Valley Castle and Glenariff and so on, and some of the other smaller towns do provide some level of accommodation. But again, these people do require accommodation transfer to B&Bs or hotels within the area. And we're really keen that any of these that we're talking about, whether it's accommodation, food and drink or walking provision, are on the trail. So they're not 10 miles away or even five miles away. It's quite a journey for someone that's there specifically to walk the trail. Um, I think a number of people would ideally set up a tent so they didn't have to leave the trail but um, wild camping is discouraged unless it's you know um, in a designated campsite. So the section cannot obviously be walked in one day in this eastern section um, and it is remote so again this section pr presents clear issues for walkers so I suppose what we identify is, will a walker walk it or will they walk a section that offers them more by way of provision? And we're keen to fill that gap. Um, with regards to food and drink, in our analysis, we do feel like there is sufficient food and drink along the trail, but this can also always be improved in perhaps those middle bits of section of trail where a coffee van could sit at a viewpoint area and that's a perfect stop for someone to take a short break. Or maybe there's a campsite or a glamping pod or something along the trail that that person can easily go to. And again, along the Causeway Coast, there's a fantastic TransLink service that does run and is very popular with walkers. But perhaps there's things like baggage transfer. So if someone is staying in Bush Mills and walking to Bally Castle, can you partner with an accommodation provider in Valley Castle and drop that person's bags off. That is really appreciated. And you see that in walking trails right across the world. And with regards to walking uh, provision, certainly um, the Causeway Coast and Glens is a popular place um, for tour guides. And there's a large range of tour providers um, available along the entire route. So no matter where someone's point of interest is, there's a choice for them. And as well as that, Cosby Coast and Glens 
um, pre-COVID um, had walking festivals. And this is a fantastic tool that can be used to draw in um, walkers. We see this in the Morn International Walking Festival where they get people traveling from all over the world to, to take part. And we do see this as a fantastic opportunity. Perhaps you can put on a discount for people that are coming to walk the, the, the festival route. Um, and maybe you can offer a tour the next day or the day before. It's adding something different into what you do. Next slide, please, Gary. So this is a rather cluttered page of text, but there's a lot of business opportunities, even though we're saying that there's plenty already in certain areas, there's always room for more. Those short distance walkers, we see those as uh, local people, people visiting the Causeway Coast and Glens maybe for a day or a weekend. And as Beverly mentioned, those people are looking for short guided walks with refreshments. And they're looking to go into those areas, unique selling points. So maybe they want to go to the Causeway because it's the UNESCO World Heritage Site, or maybe they want to hear local folklore. Um, and that's what will sell it to people. The refreshments area can be as simple as stopping by a local pub and the people on the tour get a pint of Guinness. Or it could be that the tour guide provides a packed lunch. What we're looking to do is that people don't really have to think about bringing snacks and bringing things like that, but they get to come and enjoy the trail. Um, and that's where my colleague Ethan will be chatting to everybody about getting experience packages together that we can promote and that really sell your business. The medium and the long distance walker um, are a different kind of person. They're looking for a package in some occasions. Um, that's things like accommodation, an evening meal, a packed lunch, shuttle service, bag transfers, guides, they're looking for it all. There's also long distance walkers who aren't looking for any of that, but we're kidding for the majority here. So those are people who like to know when they come, everything's taken care of and they can just enjoy their experience. And then as well as that, you know, we're thinking about those opportunities for on the trail accommodation. So as I said, things like a campsite, it could be just a few hundred yards from the trail and that's ideal. Shuttle services to and from hub towns um, and we've identified some of those there. Discounts for those attending walking festivals. We've seen this in the um, morns with the International Walking Festival. But we're not asking you to set up an entirely new business. We're looking for you to think of how you can tailor your current offering to be really appealing. And we'll be um, over the next number of months in touch with you to really create these packages, the likes of Tourism NI and um, Tourism Ireland and things are able to promote. And um, I suppose in Northern Ireland, it's that embrace the giant spirit side of things. So they're looking for something a wee bit different for the visitor. And then as Beverly mentioned, we're keen to promote the trail on your marketing uh, platform. So that could be your website or your Facebook page or Twitter or an Instagram. Maybe you have a set of walkers who have just been out doing the walk. That's what will sell this trail. Um, maybe you've done the muddy, muddy boots welcome and you have some um, long distance walkers have come in for a well-deserved cup of coffee and a bun. And that's what we're, we're looking to see is those different elements along the trail. Next slide, please, Gary. So as I mentioned, um, my colleague Ethan is looking to create these IAT visitor experiences and these will sit on our website. So through the marketing campaign, we're hoping and anticipating to draw a lot of traffic to the website. This is free for you to advertise on. So I really do encourage you to make the most of this opportunity that's available. And we'll be sending these experiences to various tour operators, as I said, to Tourism Northern Ireland and things like that, who will spread the word even further. So having those really bespoke packages is really key here. I've included Ethan's email address here. Um, should you wish to get in touch with him directly, 
um, please do email him. His email address is ethan at outdoor recreation ni.com and if you're um, not sure didn't take note of it there um, you can just let us know I know Carrie's been in contact with you all and she can send that out as well now we're just going to Carrie's going to do a quick switch of screens um, we're delighted to have as I mentioned earlier a pre-recording by Eve Nicholson Eve is from the team and um, the work on the Wales Coastal Path um, and it really is a fantastic trail. Again, as I mentioned at the end of this uh, presentation recording, Eve does give her email address. So please do get in touch with her. Um, she'd only be too delighted um, to speak with you. Um, this is a pre-record um, with so many webinars. We couldn't get her to attend them all just due to other commitments. So um, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks, Carrie. Hello, I'm Eve Nicholson and I work for the Wales Coast Path team here in Wales. We've been asked by the Outdoor Recreation Northern Ireland to talk about how we engage with businesses along the way. Firstly, let's introduce ourselves. The Wales Coast Path is 870 miles long and it is a footpath that follows the entire Welsh coastline. It was officially launched open for business in May 2012 as one of the few coastal footpaths in the world around the country. We do a variety of business to business and business to consumer marketing activities and we work very closely with Visit Wales with the, which is the tourism arm of Welsh Government and Welsh Government who are the funders of the path. We have a dedicated team of PATH officers covering all of those marketing sectors that you see on the image, as well as a, mar a small marketing team. If you have time, there is a video there, which is basically an overview of what the PATH means to different people through drone footage and interviews. The PATH also incorporates some well used and existing walking routes that were um, already marketed as coastal walking routes such as the Isle of Anglesey in North Wales, Ceredigion in, in Midwest and it also includes the Pembrokeshire Coast Path in the West which is already part of the Appalachian Trail. So who are our target audiences? So when I was thinking about who we actually target, I was thinking of the types of behaviours and kind of the trends that our audiences display on our social media and also the people who we've met along the way on the path. And these are the kind of traits that really spring to mind. So we have those who are adventurous who already know about the path and they're all very enthusiastic walkers anyway. They tend to want to through hike or walk the path over a long period of time and some do it over five, six, seven years. So there's lots of repeat visits. We have those who are just find out about the path and they are seeking more information, they're enthusiastic with the information they have to hand and they just want to start walking it. Then we have those new audiences who have yet to discover the Wales Coast Path and recently new audiences for us have been the Welsh Youth Movement. So we've been working with the Earth, which is the National Voluntary Youth Organisation here in Wales, as well as the Brownies and also the National Churches Trust. We also market to coastal accommodation providers such as there's b and there's campsites and hotels along the path. The travel trade, tour operators and travel agents with, um, with Visit Wales and also coastal businesses which may be cafes, um, shops, kiosks that really make walking the path an experience. Um, so those are the people who we market to on a B2B basis. So here are some key audience insights into our customers. 
Our 2015 visitor survey found that there was a nearly equal split between male and female visitors and the average age of 53 years old. Um, this is actually in reverse to what's on our social media following on Facebook in particular, we have more females, but same age range. Um, so that's quite an interesting observation. 59% um, of the Wales Coast Path walkers who were included in the survey actually resided in Wales, but there was also a large proportion of walkers from the Northwest England, Southwest Wales and the Midlands. The average spend is around £4.63 whilst on the path, so spending money on, say, drinks, a bit of food um, and things like that. And the average distance walked was three miles. Whilst we've been walking on the path, we've seen people from overseas, we've seen families, but we've also seen groups. So there's quite a variety of walkers on the path. So when we were asked how businesses have adapted to the path and its visitors, I did a quick Google search and I found these two hotels, both based um, in the southwest coast in Wales on the Gower Peninsula. Now you will see from the screenshots of their websites is that they know what their visitor wants, what the walker wants. So for example, the hotel on the left hand side they have a dedicated walking page. Um, they offer walking itineraries to take away, but they also offer facilities aimed at walkers specifically. So that's things like offering a packed lunch somewhere dry to, um, to dry their clothes and provision of maps, which is always a really, really good thing and those good things to offer. And the same with the one on the right, they actually link to our website to give their guests more information to help them plan their visit to the Wales Coast Path and to their accommodation. So this particular coastal accommodation we really sprang to mind in terms of the way they market themselves on social media. So Aberporth Coastal Holidays, um, they are in West Wales in, um, on the on Ceredigion and this is their, a screenshot of their Instagram account. Now the first thing that really strikes me is their inspirational content mixed in with details of their offer. So it's mainly about what you would find there in terms of the stunning scenery and the things to do. And when we spoke to them they said they learnt that the coast path is a really big draw for their visitors. So what they do now on their social media posts is that they put some detailed um, walks on their Instagram account. They do plenty of videos and they use our hashtags. And most importantly, they tag us on their posts. Um, and that's really good because it means that we can like, we can reshare, we can comment on all their um, great content. And um, it's good for customers to see what they're expecting. The one thing that I really did like about this particular social media account is that on the left, on the right hand side there, they have easy to access highlights. So there you see guest reviews, they have a bit about coast path, the beaches, the Abba and Abbapol from days out. And these are really easy to access information for their visitors. And the one thing that you probably can't see much on the, um, on the actual presentation, but they've also put a, a window sticker in their window. Now, on previous business engagement um, events, we gave out window stickers which said, Wales Coast Path welcoming walkers. And we encouraged the business at the time to put these up in their window for passing trade. And it's really as a way of a ra raising brand awareness physically on the path because it's 870 miles long, but you won't see a way marker, say, every mile, every two miles. 
So when you come to places along the path where there's buildings, it was important for us that there was a physical awareness of the logo and our ethos. And so they've taken on board and put the, the sticker in their window, which is re really good for both of us, really. So thinking about um, the other businesses that we market to um, about the path, we thought of uh, Anglesey Walking Holidays. So they specialise in guided coastal walks and they also do those extra things like accommodation booking, providing maps and working with other local businesses, for example, eateries on suggestions and where to eat. And not only do they do walking holidays, they also offer cycling holidays. So there's an extra bit of activity that their walkers could do as well. The second business that we thought of was the Sheen Coastal Bus Service. Now this was initially a two year trial using um, grants from public sector. And now it's part of a Welsh Government Transport Initiative to have buses running in certain parts of Wales. Now, the USP for this service is that there is no fixed route or timetable. So walkers can book their space on the bus from wherever they start or finish on the path via phone or online booking. Now this is a really big draw for this particular bus service because there's service in a section of the path that has very little or no public transport on popular walking days. So they're available from Friday, from, some, from Friday to Monday for a small fee. And the bonus about this is that it's also being used by locals along the coast path as well. So when we were asked about best practices in promoting the Wales Coast Path, we immediately thought of the experience of being on the path. So walking the Welsh coastline and soaking up our heritage and our unique language along the way is our USP. And Trade Insights found that when people come to Wales, they want an authentic experience. When they're out in the open, they want something uniquely Welsh. And also research has shown that people like multi-activity holidays. So combining, say, walking with a bit of cycling, a bit of shopping and things like that. So with those insights in mind, we um, worked with Snowdonia Active, a not-for-profit organisation, which operates as a consultancy delivering projects linked to outdoor recreation, tourism and conservation in Wales. And as a part of an existing project, they were putting together a collection of memorable experiences. And these encouraged the visitor to bond with Wales via distinctive and engaging products. So we thought, oh, this sounds really interesting. See how, let's see how this can work for Wales Coast Path and walking. So we ran a webinar and it was aimed at businesses or individuals to see how they can combine their business or interest with the path. So the experience that is um, exampled here is a wild swim adventure with the Blue Tits. So the Blue Tits are a group of people who love swimming in the sea, no matter what the weather is. So their experience, their offer is walk the coast path in Pembrokeshire and finish off with an organised swim in the sea, followed by a hot drink and great company. And this is quite a unique experience and it gives our Wales Coast Path visitors a little bit of added extra value to their time in Wales. And we just thought that combining the Wales Coast Path walking with other experiences, it just gives a more rounded holiday experience. So how do we optimise or make the most of the customer journey along the path for customers to be able to experience the coast path at its best? So in terms of the reach part of the diagram here, we make sure that we have good quality visitor information on our website. So 
um, adhering to search engine optimization principles is really important so that people can find us easily online. We also use social media to deliver good content suited to our customers. So we share our walking itineraries according to what's trending or relevant at the time. So when it comes to summer holidays, we push out our family itineraries. And we also do printed leaflets about the path and we get those distributed all over Wales as well as inland areas to coastal accommodation, so B&Bs, campsites. We also do them where there's high footfall such as supermarkets and libraries and also at transport hubs such as um, service stations and um, key areas where people enter Wales. We try and get people to act upon our, our marketing efforts. So for example, we ask, well, we encourage people to join our Facebook community group. And this has been extremely popular during the summer where people were doing staycations because of the pandemic. And so we had a lot of people joining the community group asking where's the best place to start and, and putting up inspiring pictures of their walks on the path. And this is a really good social listening tool for businesses to see what questions are people asking and see whether your business can plug those gaps in information. We also want people to download our Wales Coast Path app. We use um, augmented reality and um, drone footage and games on our app to help people discover the path in a different way, in a more fun way. But we also have a track my walk function, which is really aimed at those people who want to walk the path for, for long periods of time and to track their walk. And we also want people to download or share our walking itunes on their social media. In terms of the convert, we have um, our newsletters, which goes out uh, as and when there are really relevant things to talk about. And we have a mixture of, um, of B2B and B2C subscribers. We roughly have about 1,400 subscribers at the moment. Um, each newsletter has a bit of stuff about current work and forward look and it links to our marketing toolkits where appropriate. So these are really good also kind of things to catch up on so that you know where we're going with with our marketing and promotional activity. We want to engage with people um, on the path. So we definitely encourage user generated content by sharing, commenting and and, you know, and liking and with the Aberporth Coastal Holidays social media account on Instagram, that's a prime example of really using good imagery of where you are on the path to inspire, infuse and help people discover a different part of the Wales Coast path. We also do live streams on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram where possible. Again, that real life feed is really engaging and it can be easily shared on social media channels. So how do we help businesses optimise the path? Well, we have developed a series of marketing toolkits so the one on the far left is a marketing toolkit designed at any coastal businesses. And so this is a basically a guide on how to use the polling power of the Wales Coast Path with top tips and insights in what we promote um, about the path, giving ideas such as pack lunches, providing maps, um, showing their visitors where they can walk and the more information that people have at accommodation the better and they can decide then where they want to go. 
We've also put together a travel trade toolkit. We saw that there was a bit of a, mar um, a gap in our information provision um, and we have been targeting businesses but not the travel trade. So we worked with Visit Wales on developing a travel trade toolkit. And with this, we put together details on where to stay, getting about, cruise port facilities, things to do, where to shop and where to eat and drink, and all that essential information for tour operator or travel agent to put together for their customers. We've also put together official professional imagery and video and these are all accessible on our social channels and they're free to download and um, free to use in their promotional marketing as well. So I've come to nearly the end of my presentation. Um, these are, but well, this is where you can find further information about us. So these these are the links to our website and our social channels, but also the toolkits. Um, you can find us online uh, using the handle at Wales Coast Path, and we're on the main platforms. And those are hashtags. And if you have any queries, you can easily email us on that email there. So without further ado, I just want to say thank you very much for listening. Um, we hope that we've given you a little bit of inspiration, a few ideas on how we've engaged with businesses along the Wales Coast path. Um, and thank you. Fantastic. Um, thank you, Kerry, for your technical support there. Um, yeah, so as Eve said, there's so many things that, that they provide um, for people along the route. And so um, we'll be able to share that with you. So you'll be able to see what, what other people um, are getting and uh, along that section of trail. And maybe you can steal some ideas um, along the way. Um, we'll be sharing copies of this uh, webinar as a recording. Um, and also a copy of the slides just so you can look back on them. So we are quickly rattling through this evening. Um, but if anybody has any questions, um, we would love you to be able to field them here. Um, obviously, if any questions or for council specific, we can take note of those um, and pass those on to Richard Gillen um, and, and his team working, working on that. But if you have any questions, um, please do bring yourself to my attention, either by turning your camera on and giving us a wave or, um, yeah, but just make sure you unmute yourself and we'll, we'll say your name. Hello, maybe can I start, Andrew McAllister? Just a couple, Hi, Andrew. A couple of wee points. Um, you mentioned dogs and encouraging pets. There are certainly certain areas where that would not be a good idea. We're a bit worried about the consistency of that. I'll just make two or three points and leave it at that. I have some issues about that. The whole Glenarraf to Carnlock situation is also, I mean, that's a bit of a disaster. That particular, sorry, I must confess an interest here. Uh, I was heavily involved in IAT as part of rural development, but I stepped down from that now. But that section, there's a glorious section across there, which needs looked at to some extent. I would love to see also a wee bit of, something, a small presentation that local groups and villages like mine, like Cushendall, Cushendon, could use for a whole lot of different reasons. Um, you ignored Rathlin, love Rathlin. I, I know it's one of the ones that's offshoot, and I know where you're coming from there. The, the area between Ballycastle and Glenara is an issue. Glenara Forest Park is there to some extent. Love to see more walking festivals. We are starting to see Rambler groups from England coming across, and that would be a good place to market them. Mm -hmm. And presuming you're marketing with the tourism clusters, and I just have one or two wee issues about the whole health and safety. A whole pile of points there. I'll stop at that. No problem, Andrew. Thank you so much um, for those comments. Just on the point of dogs, so I actually manage the Walk MI website. Um, 
during my, I'll call it my day job. Um, so yeah, one of the things we won't be doing is we won't be promoting any sections of the trail that currently have a no drug allowed policy. So if it passes through open farmland where animals would be at risk and things like that, we certainly won't be promoting those areas. In regards to that comment, um, it will be more in those areas where dogs are always allowed, you know, it could be the more um, busy hub areas, you know, maybe a walk from um, Portrush um, along a beach and things like that, where dogs are allowed depending on seasons and things like that. So we are very conscious on that. Um, I know we've just recently delivered an entire campaign on people staying on the right side of outside, which is really encouraging people to keep your dog on a lead if it needs to be on a lead, if that's the rule. And um, if they're not supposed to be there at all, they're, don't bring them. So we are very conscious of that, Andrew. Um, with regards to engaging with local community groups and things like that, we are really keen to connect in with community groups. Um, so if a community group is keen to promote something going on in their area, we can certainly promote that. That's where, you know, maybe there's a local music festival happening happening in Camelot or in Glenariff or something. You know, maybe that's the ideal time for a walker to come to that area. Um, so that's where we really rely on you to be a fountain of knowledge for us. Um, and we're delighted to hear that you've been involved in the IAT um, groups and so on before. So we certainly know you're a great resource to have um, on this call. Thanks, Andrew. Can I take a question from anybody else? Hi, Jane. It's Kerry McGonagall from Causeway Council here. Just wondering, will you be promoting the Welcome Walkers scheme that TNI um, use through their classifications and also do the business have to be we're good to go to be involved? Yeah, so they do. Um, and that's something, Ian, we're really conscious of is partnering with um, TNI and so on to make sure we're not, you know, even things down to the accommodation, we're keen to be listing those people that are, you know, accredited by them and things like that. So we certainly will be, and um, we are in close communication with them to make sure our messages and our promotions are in line with, with, with what's going on there. Hello, Jane. Um, Hi, Dan. I don't know if you hear me there. Yes, it's Dan. <laughs> For some reason, my son's name has come up on this oh. computer. <laughs> uh, Jane, um, I, I just wanted to know, just in terms of consultation, only because we had similar issues up around Fairhead, where some walking trails were put in with a kind of non-governmental organisation. and It created a, a few issues. Some of it was really successful, some of it was really good, but it kind of went off a wee bit kind of half cut without consulting any of the other you know, national governing bodies. So like Mountaineer in Ireland, I don't know if they've been involved in it. I know they have a, a role to play, not just in terms of their knowledge and experience of, of these types of trails before, but also their impact environmentally and, and uh, waste management as much as um, impact on the environment, whether that's, you know, physical or uh, environmental, but also their experience within, you know, the how these walking trails can degrade an environment and, and help, you know, build it so that it it is sensitive to the to the areas and it doesn't end up just looking like a big trail through the place, you know. So uh, I don't know if Mount Nairn have been involved or any of the other local walking clubs within the area, you know, to kind of garner opinion from them or, or what their take is. Yeah, so um, thank you for that question. Um, so prior to um, us taking on this project, there was actually, um, the trail was launched in 2013, um, and there was a key group involved in that, a steering group of which the likes of the Ulster Federation of Rambling Clubs um, had a huge involvement, a few tour, tour guides like Martin Bradley and things was chair of that, is chair of that, um, and that is still ongoing, and that is... Um, full of people who come from a walker perspective, from that governing body perspective. Um, Mountaineering Ireland, I'm not 100% sure if they're all on that steering grip, but I know that um, conversations are happening. I know Richard Gillen said that in his conversation about, you know, there's some areas that just need to be left alone, that the, there's a natural thing where 
maybe that section of trail is only ever explored by locals who love the complete and utter silence of it, the rambling group who enjoy walking it once every year or um, and so on. And so we're really sensitive to that. So the likes of Fairhead, where we know the trails went in, I know we were involved, my Joe Recreation and I, um, in the development of that and, and so on. And um, we know how areas can go to an extreme if we look at Fermanagh's famous example of the Kulka Boardwalk. You know, yeah. we see that something that was installed for an environmental, you know, to protect the environment has actually had ripple effects on, on the environment now. So we're conscious of that. And so we're conscious if there are areas where maybe there are huge erosion issues because there's too many people on the trail, we'll pull back from those. The best example that I have is Inga from DLDC. The start point for the IAT is the Sleeve League Cliffs. The Sleeve League Cliffs don't need promoted. They will sell themselves a thousand times over to walkers and tourists. But what we want to do is we want to promote those hidden gem sections in the trail. So that waterfall that someone sees in an Instagram picture, we want them to be inspired not only to go to that waterfall, but to check out the lovely beach just a mile down the road. So we're keen to highlight those sections. Um, on the website, we'll be dividing mm -hmm. it up and providing highlights. So these are short walks. So they're walks of around five miles or less where someone can go and experience something great on the IAT, get their picture opportunity, really get a flavor of the trail. If they're sticking around a few more days, they might go explore somewhere else. So what we'll be doing is we'll be focusing on those kind of walks, providing the, here, do you want this really nice view of Rathlin Island or the Causeway Coast? Um, then go here. And, and, and that's what we'll be tapping into. But yes, we are really sensitive to the kind of draw of people um, to certain areas where, you know, maybe as Richard says, they're better left alone for people do enjoy. I think that's one of the joys of the likes of some of these areas, the Sperrins and the Causeway Coast. I wrote a statement earlier in a blog. It was like, you may only meet another backpacker. And I think that's what people want. I don't think people want to meet a hundred tourists that have just come off a tour bus. Um, and this trail really taps into that. Someone just going and reconnecting with nature and flora and fauna and views and things like that. So um, yes, the, the quick answer to that is, yeah, we'll be really sensitive to, to the trails and, 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 and the, the impact that, that pulling more walkers to it will have. Yeah. No, I, I was at the meeting on the, in 2013 and, and that was my concern then uh, and I've heard nothing since and I went on that mailing list, but um, Mountaineer and I weren't involved then either and I, I, just, I thought that was maybe a wee bit remiss and I know they have a lot of experience there that they could kind of mm. tap into you that would be of benefit as well. In this for sure, year. for sure. Thanks, Jean. No problem. Hello, Jean. It's Nula McKeever here, um, North Star Wellbeing. So I take walks along the Causeway Coast and Benevena and the Sperrins, and I've actually walked the entire Ulster section of the IAT last year. Oh, fantastic. So it's great to hear that all of these enhancements to some of the styles and the, the signage and all of that there. But what about... Um, access, land access. Now I'm aware from walking different places, so there's different regulations with, even if it's um, DERA or the Northern Ireland Environment Agency, is there any access requirements for any commercial activity along the IAT trail? That I am not 100% sure the answer to, but I can certainly find the answer unless Carrie can nod. She's maybe heard it elsewhere in another one. Um, but I can certainly find that out um, for you. I know um, with regards to access, um, a lot of the, the works that have been done are on council land. I know Richard is working kind of with forest service and things like that, you know, to divert and go through forests and things like that. So um, I can certainly bring that up to him, Noah. Um, firstly, it's fantastic to hear that you've walked this section of trail. We'll have to get you to write a blog or something on your experience. You've just volunteered for that. Um, 
but it's it's so great to hear that you've walked it and that you know you have knowledge on that so when you do do tours with people or or you just quite walking yourself you know that really that really is is a wonderful thing but we can certainly find that out for you and there is um i do some work with mountaineer in ireland so there is a, a girl helen who looks after a lot yes. of the access so i know helen had asked some looked at some things for me last year so she may be even involved in this i haven't spoke to her directly about the iet but there might be a link in no there problem somewhere. yeah we work closely with helen helen lawless um is a fantastic advocate for walking right across the island of ireland so no we'll certainly bring that up and we'll seek an answer for you nilla thank you Hi Jane, I'm Hi, Jerry, and um, I own the Chocolate Manor in Castle Rock. Um, <laughs> and um, the main reason that I, um, you know, uh, came on uh, to find out about this this evening um, is in terms of being able to offer an add-on to those who are walking the trail. For once, it's lovely to see and hear Castle Rock ahead of Port Stewart, Port Rush, <laughs> and these sorts of things, um, and. You know, one of the things that we are very, very keen on is putting Castle Rock on the map. So this seems like, you know, something, as you say, that so few people are actually aware of um, in terms of how the trail actually um, comes right through into the village. Um, so do you see there being opportunities if you look at the sort of examples, you know, of that, set, that sea swimming experience? I'm thinking, <clears throat> excuse me, about adding that sort of, you know, option where people would come in and enjoy chocolate making or chocolate tasting or, you know, a hot chocolate, you know, after their walk and, and that sort of thing. Yes, I actually seen you at Balmoral show. <laughs> Balmoral? Yes, and I actually looked you up. I was like, oh, this sounds like a fantastic activity to do along the North Coast. Um, yeah, that's exactly what this trail is about. It's about the unique and different elements. So maybe you have an IAT chocolate mould that someone can yeah. make an IAT way marker out of something like that. Maybe there's just a walker, whatever it may be. Yeah. That's what we want the walker to really experience. Because what we can say is there's a local who makes um, chocolate in the area. You know, whenever you're out for a walk, stop by, you know, what we're not saying to people is keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. What we're saying is, Go and experience the IAT trail, but experience those things to the left and right of it. Yeah. Um, those things that are, I'm not talking five miles away, I'm talking ones that are, are right along the way. And and that's the beauty of it. Maybe there's um, room there that, that you partner with local accommodation in Castle Rock and they provide the accommodation for someone that mentions the IAT. Yeah. And you can jump in with a package on that and maybe, yeah, maybe they can yeah. go wild swimming or they can walk the trail or they get a guided tour up to the statue on top of Benevla and things like that. And those are the sort of things that are really unique that someone Googling unique things to do finds this lovely package. And yeah. that's what that's what the likes of tourism in Northern Ireland are really wanting to see come out of this. They're wanting to yeah. see be unique yeah. and different um maybe it's the likes of a wellness walk maybe someone does a, a wellness walk or forest bathing you know near downhill forest or something and then they come and and, and they do your experience and that's mm -hmm. why we're so keen that we do these industry engagements it's because we do want to see more than just accommodation food and drink as in restaurants cafes pubs and so on we want to see different things come along the trail. I know a good example is tourism and I love the Glen Sheehan. You can go and herd sheep up with a, a sheep dog and things like that. They love stuff like that. Yeah. But what we want to say is while you're out walking, this is more than just a trail. This is more than just walking, walking, walking. It's actually um, a route that takes you through. It's like a big driving route. It's like someone driving the Causeway Coast Way, um, Coastal Route, sorry. Um, you know, they're going to stop and see the view at Fairhead or they're going to go to Torhead or they're going to stop in Castle Rock and go to the beach and have an ice cream and things like that. So mm -hmm. we really want to tap into that and certainly get people into those, th those hub areas to do an activity. 
Great. Thank you, Jane. Jane. Yes. Uh, this is um, Brendan. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm just a bit concerned that we've sort of drifted away from the Appalachian Trail as an entity to basically a vehicle for promoting tourism. Because there, there doesn't appear to be very much coherence in, in the trail itself. I mean, there's a, there's a North Coast section, which, you know, if just a sleeve league doesn't need promoting because it will sell itself. I think the North Coast section is probably going to sell itself because we, the, the other bits, the left and right sections up through the Sparrows and particularly down the Moy Way are just incredibly different in character. I think if someone is going to be interested in the Appalachian Trail, if, if the American audience for the Appalachian Trail, they are through hikers, they're long distance hikers. And I'm, I'm just a bit concerned, partly on the health and safety issues, you know, someone can do a two or a three or a four mile walk along the North Coast, fantastic, and, you know, do sea swimming and coast steering, whatever. But someone who sets off in the Moy Way, you know, uh, it's probably going to either have a not very pleasant experience because it's it's basically road walk from uh, from Bali Castle until Breenwood, uh, you know, through the forest. But no. And if they come the other way, they're going to end up calling out the mountain rescue because there is nothing. Uh, you know, you might want the idea of, you know, well, if it's chocolate shops, I love the idea of a chocolate shop. And if there's a chocolate shop, uh, you know, at, at some of the places along the Moyle Way at the other side of Trost, and I would very welcome it, but I think it's highly unlikely. And I, I just I just wonder whether we've just drifted into this being uh, a tourism hook, really, as opposed to uh, the Appalachian Trail, you know, which, you know, it's only going to be, from your stats, it looks like, 20, 30% at most are going to be people who are ever going to do the Moyle Way section or the Sparren section because there isn't really, uh, you know, a two or a three mile coherent chunk in those bits, certainly not in the Moyle Way, you know. So I, I just, is, 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 is the cunning plan here just to, to brand uh, a section of it as an Appalachian Trail without really promoting it as a trail? It's just a vehicle for promoting experiences to bring in tourists. Yeah, so Brendan, we'll be, um, I suppose it comes from a diff couple of different perspectives. So it, it comes down to who we're promoting to. So, you know, a, a, a local or a, someone walking a short distance, that may be just tapping into their holiday, but those people that we're also promoting to are those people who are willing to walk it Maybe they're looking to take, I was just doing the itineraries there today. Maybe they have a longer full day so they can walk a much larger section of the Sparrows. Um, or maybe they're wanting to walk over a weekend, two days. Um, and that would take in quite a lot of, of some sections of trail. Um, three days a week and then the full walker. So there'll be various messages that go out. So, um, it's important to say, I think it can always sound like we're saying, oh, just come and walk this tiny half mile section. Um, but it's actually, those are where we're seeing uh, other businesses pull people onto the trail. And ultimately that raises awareness of the trail. Um, it's a bit like the Ulster Way. The Ulster Way is incredibly well known. There are sections of the Ulster Way that are, um, on the road and would be a horrible walk for someone to do. So what we would do, well, hopefully with these capital works is a lot of those Ulster Way walks have actually been moved off road to be safer for people um, rather than traveling along busy highways, but also in the way we describe things. So you mentioned there the Moyle Way. Well, we'll make sure that when we're promoting that, that section is for the person who can probably rack up a lot of miles in a day and they're, they're maybe like Nula who are wanting to walk the whole thing and therefore we will make sure in the description of that we're avoiding sending novice walkers. I suppose that's the conscious thing that we're doing is in 
raising the profile of a trail, you're naturally going to get more people be like, oh, I can walk a bit of that or I saw that sign and, and things like that. So we want to make sure there's an equal balance between where we're sending experienced walkers and where we're sending the novice walker. The novice walker will do the five miles and that's what we'll promote. But we want to avoid them going into, I, I, I remember reading a blog and someone saying about a section through Donegal and they themselves are quite an experienced walker, but they got confused and lost. And that's what we want to avoid. The likes of Slave League Pilgrim's Path is quite a dangerous walk. It's quite a steep walk. It requires a lot of um, fitness to do it. We don't want to be sending just anybody up there because that's again kind of irresponsible on our part. It's a bit like sending too many tourists to, to one location. But I suppose, uh, Brendan, we'll be covering a lot of different aspects, but we haven't certainly lost sight and will not lose sight of the person coming and walking the full length of the trail. I suppose we're just acknowledging the fact that the majority will be these short walkers who are visiting an area for a weekend um, or so on, but maybe staycationing. But then we'll have these messages. So I know Kerry's worked hard to do some merchandise. So that's those people that love bagging trails. They're like, okay, I've got a buff from this trail and a pin badge to add to my rucksack. So we've thought of kind of everybody along the way. Mm. Um, and I suppose when we're talking about these experiences, that's where I mentioned like a through walker, a long distance walker is looking for like a package. They're looking the baggage transfer and they're looking those kind of things. But someone coming and walking just a day or a very short amount of time, they're looking the tour guide almost sometimes to take mm. them on the trail. Yeah. I just, I, keep, oh, sorry, was, Brennan. No, just to say, because um, I, I walked the Ulster away three years ago and I, I, on the plus side, it's very good. The section you've got is the section which is mostly off the road. The lower half of the Ulster Way is a shit walk, really. You know, it's through Armagh, you know, it's basically tarmac all the way. So you've got the right section. But, and, and, and thank you for explaining the position that you're taking about promoting it. But I, I do think more effort needs to be put into basically the through walker, because that's that's mm. the brand. That's the, you know, the, you know, all that, you know, Paleolithic stuff about mountain reeds is only makes sense if you started Sleeve League and finish at Lauren, you know, mm. and I, just to support Andrew's point, the, the section from, from, from Waterfoot to the Corn Lock is a nightmare. It should really go over the mm -hmm. top of the plateau, as everybody knows it should go over the plateau, because the, you have to walk the coast road, and the coast road there is the exact width of two cars and one human set of hips. So it's, it's really deadly, and something really should be done about that. But the main point I'm making is, I think, a focus on the through walkers because all the other bits, all those buffs and marketing are all basically hanging off the effort of through walkers. And at the moment, to be honest, I don't think you could walk, you couldn't do a through walk of the International Appalachian Trail through Ulster, Ireland without breaking the law about wild camping and, you know, squatting on someone's land. At the moment, it would not be possible to do that. So, so I think more work needs to get done on the on the three model. I that's that's where I suppose the premise of these webinars has come from. Um, you know, we understand that it is not a finished product and that mm -hmm. there are gaps, and that is why you know I've spent a lot of time doing an industry audit, a gap analysis, going through piece by piece and you know, area by area and going through all what, what provision is there, what provision are we missing and what opportunities there are. So likes of that Moyle Way, if there's an opportunity for, you know, a walking guide to say, right, this is a pretty, you know, it's not a great area. So I'll take you through and maybe I'll go through and tell their stories from the trail and give their, you know, the opportunities are there. And by no means is, is it a finished product. And that's why we're, we're having these webinars to kind of say, look, go away and have a think about it. What can your business do? Not just to, you know, amp themselves up as a tourist, but to to contribute to the overall IAT product. So, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Vernon. And certainly we take those things on board um, and we know that this is a thing that will evolve over time. It was launched in 2013. So 
that was quite some time ago. Um, so we know, you know, it, 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 it's raising a profile, but we know this is something we'll, we'll, we'll evolve, you know. So we're at 20 to nine, can you believe it? Um, late into the evening, um, you must all be night oils. Um, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you all for setting some time aside this evening. Um, as I said, this is all recorded, so all your questions um, will pass on to our various teams and colleagues and so on. But you know, do please email us any questions you have, whether it be about how you can build on your experiences, or if you have any questions, um, like Brendan, about the route and about long distance walkers and what our kind of marketing intentions are and things, please do be a part of our conversations. Um, we really do appreciate it. This walk ultimately um, only is a success if the people along it really do champion it. So um, providers are really key to that. Kerry mentioned she did an audit. Um, I see the work that goes on behind the scenes on that, and it certainly is no mean feat to identify how many accommodation providers are in the North Coast, which is a lot. Um, but thank you so much, everybody, for joining us tonight. And certainly you'll be hearing from us again, and I'm pleased to keep in touch. Thank you so much.